it's your time to shine with all things fabulous with First for Women on Afternoon Express. For insurance with a host of fabulous benefits, call 0861 11 1844 or SMS FIRST to 49267. Good afternoon, South Africa. Lovely to be back on your screens as this Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. It's a Tuesday, which means we yes. are going green. Mm -hmm. Very, very excited. My name is Bonang Mateba. And I'm Bonnie Booley. Welcome indeed. So Mother Teresa once said, it's not about how much you give, it's about how much love you put into giving. And having said that, today we'll be discussing NGOs that are making a positive impact on the South African landscape. And we talk about what goes into running a successful NGO. Absolutely. We've got so many amazing guests in studio. Radio personality, Shella Twilight is here because she is a chairperson of an organization called the Cape Craft mm -hmm. and Design Institute. Remember, we are live. So make sure you tweet us at Afternoon Chat. Use our official hashtag. Call us. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Do what you need to do. Yeah, and today we launch our 12-week sustainability series and later on we'll be talking about energy conserving methods. And keep your phone mm. handy so you can enter our Go Green competition. But we're not alone. We're with the sexy Danilo. <laughs> there seems to be loads going on on today's show and it's not going to stop there, ladies. I've also got Lillian Dube who joins us on the show today. She's one of the ambassadors for the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. Now, first of all, why do you look so sad? Because I am sad. <laughs> She's meant to be the ambassador for anti-depression. So she joins us on the show today. Plus, we do have in the kitchen today uh, one of the awesome product developers, Margot Kuhn. Good to have you with us today. I uh, hear we're making a really cool dessert that only has four ingredients. Yes, it's really, really easy. And it's Simple. delicious. Oh, amazing. Can't wait to see what that is later on in the show. And don't forget, I say this to you guys every single day. Make sure you go find our recipes on our website, www.afternoonexpress.co.za. It is so simple. The other day, I was on our website and busy downloading all my recipes, and I cooked them all. They're absolutely simple. It's easy to get, and all the shopping lists are available for you there too. And as Bonang did say, tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express. Now, that all-important number, 083-913-3728, lots of chances for you to chat to our guests live on air today. So make sure it's on speed dial for you uh, on the show. But right now, let's kick it off uh, straight into the gear. And right now, Bonnie's standing by on the couch with Shadow Twyla. Thank you, Danilo. With the career spanning over 25 years in radio and television, as well as journalism and entrepreneurship, she's no stranger to the South African media industry. Joining us on the couch is seasoned radio presenter and chairperson for the Cape Craft and Design Institute, Miss Shadow Twyla. <laughs> Welcome to the Laugh Month. Thank you. What a beautiful place, eh? It is. It's gorgeous. You guys live well. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we, we, we don't do too badly. I know. <laughs> you don't do too badly either. Well... It's over 25 years of this industry that you've loved so much. And you've come to be known as South Africa's golden voice. I, well, yeah. I suppose when you love something that much, you stay for the long haul, you know. I've moved away for a few years here and there, but I, yes. radio drags me it back. It keeps pulling you it, back. It, and it... The satisfaction of just going on air every day is immeasurable. It's, it just connects you with the rest of the country. And, and I, I suppose it's like a drug. You get addicted to that. Yeah. And when you first started, you won a radio, I mean, a presenter competition, which took you <laughs> to New York. That Tell was... us about that experience. How old were you? Oh, 20-something. Wow. Uh, it was a national competition run by... Uh, Radio Metro at the time, that's what it was called, not Metro FM. It was Radio, Radio Metro. Metro. Yes, yes. And, and, and they asked the country to, to choose the best presenter. Uh -huh. And I won and had to travel with, the, with one of the winners, because one of the listeners who also chose my name, we traveled to uh, New York, which was amazing, because I, I, do you remember that there was a funny drink that had a Manhattan in it? Oh, yeah. Uh, and they sponsored the trip. Okay, and that's that's okay. where we went. All right. Um, and, and that was the beginning of learning about other radio stations and visiting various radio stations in the US. Yes, and since then, you've grown into a world-class broadcaster. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. What can... What, what do you remember about all these years that have sustained you and, and kept you going? And what keeps you excited about what you do? Well, watching the country change. Mm -hmm. I think we were there um, uh, during our, uh, our first year of democracy. And, you know, there was a change at, at the organization, this institution that has so many radio stations and still has today. Mm -hmm. But there was a change in the air as well yeah. when you saw 
um, how people started interacting with each other. Um, and, and, and being part of the change, I think, is what keeps us on air every yes, day. Yes. Because you inform, you educate, you learn, and you, you're moving with the growth that South Africa has become. Yes. So uh, no two days are exactly the same. Yeah. And I suppose it, it goes with television as well. Exactly. Um, it exposes you to so many people and so many cultures. Yes. Because after a new democracy, we, we then learned about so many people. This whole country just yeah. opened up. Yeah. We could learn about each other, learn about each other's cultures. Yeah. And that, for me, was very important. And just knitting this country and being part of the machine that wants to see some kind of social cohesion yes. in this country. Speaking of social cohesion, you do amazing work with the CCDI. Please tell us what, what their role is and how you contribute to it. Well, you know, when I was invited to be chair, which is quite stunning for me because I, I, I wouldn't have gone to be chair of any other organization except for one that is creative and one that deals with some of the issues I'm, 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 I'm concerned about, about yeah. and I'm passionate about, how we make uh, the creative economy work in this country. And CCDI was just this working um, blueprint that I, I got attracted to and I thought, gee, if they can make it work, hopefully then we can use my networks to get it further and take right. it further around the country. Yeah let more South Africans participate, especially young people. Because mm -hmm. you know that the number of young people around the continent is, is the highest population on the continent is kids under 25. Yes. So I, I think with this blueprint, we can then help everybody. Yes, and you're also a judge on South Africa's Got Talent. <laughs> and you're the weepy one who's always crying. I love that. <laughs> what do I you love, love most that. about being a judge on the show? It, 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 the show it tells stories about South Africa who we are, you know, and storytelling is part of who, you know, our nature. But we, because it helps us reach those corners to discover talented people that we'd never, otherwise, people who come from towns I'd never heard of. Yes, you know, we find yes. those people. Young people doing amazing things. We, we live in an ageist country, I think, as well. Yes, of course. So older people who have always wanted to sing, they're pensioned now, they, but the passion is still there. We give them this opportunity. Come and do that last tick of their bucket list, you know, yes. and say, ah, I stood on a stage and I sang to an audience. Yes. That's really all they want. So it's, it's just the human stories that come yes. out of uh, God Talents that really... Uh, keep me coming back as well. And you're an absolute delight to watch on it. Tell us briefly about your company, Black Olive Entertainment. That um, takes, again, music and musicians and other artworks that we have. I knock on different countries' doors that have platforms, to create platforms, jazz platforms specifically, uh, to, to, to get South African music out there. Yes. So we've been to Milan, we've been to Rome, we've been to New Orleans, we've been... Right now, in fact, I'm knocking on Cuba's door. Oh, so yeah, You were we, just recently there. Yes. We had a great trip. Doing the same thing, knocking awesome. on Cuba's door. Hopefully awesome. they open for us and get our music and, and, and craft to, to, to their fairs. And get synergy yes. between the countries. Yes. Awesome. We're going to be chatting to you a little bit later as well, so you're not going Thank anywhere. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Shadow will be back with us a little bit later on the show when we chat more about the CCDI. After the break, Danilo makes that quick and easy dessert we when we speak to veteran actress Lillian Dube. Remember, if you have any questions for our guests today, call us on 083-913-3728. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. So in the kitchen today, we're making one of the most delicious and simple desserts you can ever make in your life using a cheese called mascarpone. Now, this is a velvety cheese, and it's awesome to use in all pastas and desserts. And here to show us more is Margot Kuhn. So, Margot, I see you already got started without me, and I'm almost glad because when things are on the stove, I always worry. No, you shouldn't be worried. This is too easy to flop. Okay. We're melting the mascarpone cheese at the moment um, on low heat. You don't want to use too much heat. Mm -hmm. We'll just add a little bit more over there. Okay. And I understand mascarpone actually takes a little bit longer than normal cheese to, to melt and get itself there. So I'm glad you actually got started for that first. So we can show everybody how simple this recipe is. Because yes. what you earlier. Really simple. Mm. Once you've melted the mascarpone cheese, you add your caster sugar. Mm -hmm. And you just keep stirring that until your caster sugar you. is melted. Thank you very I much. You. I'll juice the two lemons at this point. Um, so tell me more about this mascarpone cup. Where did the inspiration behind this come from? Because it's just literally lemon, lemon zest, mascarpone and some sugar. 
everybody's got busy lives, but you don't want to compromise on your desserts. Yeah. So that's why it's just the perfect um, solution for a dessert. Okay. With lemons being in season at the moment, they've got high antioxidant properties. Mm, mm. Um, so that's just a beautiful dessert. Lovely. Once that's melted, you can pour it into this um, uh, lemon juice over here. Cool. So is that done like that? So just get that sugar nicely. Yeah, that looks mixed good. In. It doesn't take that long. Okay. Um, so it's very easy to do. Okay, so what have you done inside there? You just squeezed how many? I've just squeezed one lemon at this point, but the recipe requires two lemons. Two. We're just doing one for now because I think there's not one, enough yes. of us to eat all that dessert. And I think, I think for our health reasons, one is probably more than enough. Yes. <laughs> and okay. then basically after you've added the lemon juice and the mascarpone mixture, you add some lemon zest. Okay. And if you can mix that for us, please. Sure. Can and you, then you, can, you can just pour that into the glasses that we have over here. Okay. You can use ramekins as well, and the idea is to put it in the fridge for about 12 hours after you've poured it into the glasses or the ramekins so that the dessert can set. Okay. So this goes in here. Yes. Just like that, is it enough? Exactly. You can pour, probably it, run out, but I'm you just can gonna... pour it to the level whichever it suits you or the okay. size of your container. I'm only going to make three because we like our desserts like this. So Great. We'll make the rest of them just now. And then this is the final product that we have over here after it's been set for 12 hours. And then I'm just going to finish it off with some double cream yogurt from Woolworths. And the beauty of this is that you get all the flavor without the fat. Oh, I see. Because it's a, a healthy alternative to cream. Mm -hmm. And um, it contains live probiotic cultures. Oh, amazing. So, so it does great. have some health benefits for you too. Definitely. Okay, so you've put those on there. We're going to finish off those now. This goes into the fridge and needs to set. Yes, okay, for 12 fantastic. hours. So we're going to put yes. those into set, obviously not for 12 hours, because this show only continues for another 45 minutes or so. And we're going to keep the ball rolling now. Standing by on our couch is none other than Lillian, Lillian Dubé. Thank you very much. Do remember that we are live and we do love hearing from you. So get calling if you have any question for any one of our guests here today. But right now we're joined by one of the legends of South African television. She's appeared on screens all across the country for more than 20 years. And is best known for her portrayal of the caring and very lovable sister Bettina Kumalo in the SABC drama series Soul Sissy. Ladies and gentlemen, Umam Lillian Dube. Lovely to have you, Mama. Good to see you. Oh, thank you. Uh, the one thing I wanted to ask you, and I said, if she ever comes to Afternoon Express, is Desmond Dubé your son? <laughs> of course. Can't you see the our noses nose. are the same? <laughs> <laughs> but mama, let's get straight into your acting career. You're part of Soul City, which has been running uh, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. and it's the longest running drama primetime series in South Africa. Mm -hmm. When you first played Sister Bettina, did you think it would go on for such a long time when you signed up? No ways. And I'm so glad. You know, when I look back, I say, mm -hmm. I was so lucky to have been to those auditions. And I always tell Bobby Heaney that, thank you, thank you for having chosen me. Yeah. Because I wasn't even serious. You know, you, when you are an actress, you go to every audition. Yes. And I'm glad I went to that one in particular. But didn't you get tired of playing the same character for over 20 years, over mm -hmm. and over again? No, there was no chance in that. You don't do the same thing every day. We True. deal with different issues. Yes, yeah. and so it, does, it wasn't tiring. Yeah, and mm. I mean, one of the issues that you did deal with, I mean, the uh, Soul City is all about health and community mm. and, you know, things that we can all relate to. But mm. the one issue, obviously, that you dealt with in the one episode was cancer. Exactly. And you beat cancer in 2008. And thereafter. And it was through Soul City that I was able to discover my own lump. And if wow. I didn't know what I knew then, I would have gone to the doctor when I was dying. But I did self-breast examination and early detection and early treatment does save lives. But so after you did discover while shooting the episode that you have mm. cancer, did it uh, make it easier or more difficult to then, you know, um, kind of deal with it or play that particular uh, character? No, no, no. I played the character before. Just, okay. And I cried because you know how directors are. They wanted me to show emotions. As a result, when I was told I've got cancer, I couldn't cry. Why? I had cried most for... The tears were finished. <laughs> finished. So what came to my mind was, yes, son, I'm out of here and I'm mm. not ready. Because for me, I felt like, no, 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 no. I haven't done anything. Because whatever I had done, I had been paid for as Sister Bettina because I love educating people. I just felt, no, 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 I've got to do something that I'm not paid for because I love to. And I started bargaining with God and I said, please save me. If you do that, I'm going to create awareness. In fact, I started creating awareness even before my surgery, which I still do up to this day. Because a lot of people are not killed by cancer. 
they are killed by ignorance. In fact, in most diseases, because to start with, they don't want to go to the doctor, True. and then they don't want to go. Also, we don't have enough hospitals with x-rays for mammograms and all that. Mm. And the hospitals are far from where people stay, and they don't even have money to go to the hospitals. So I have joined Can Survive, where we educate and tell people, we give them point of reference that you go, and we've got caregivers who can tell you, even mm. without, before you go to the clinic, what are the signs and the symptoms to look for when you've got mm. breast cancer? That's true. Mm. But something else that, I mean, before we get into involvement with another organization that deals with uh, mm. anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. you've been very open, spoken about depression mm -hmm. and uh, suffering from depression. Mm -hmm. How did you maintain an industry in comedy, in, I mean, a career in comedy, in, in, in entertainment while you were dealing with something? Fortunately like for me, all this happened before. I started acting. It was, I had wow. three bouts of depression. The last one, I was doing Soul City. But lucky for me, when I had to play a matron that was suffering from depression, I'm telling you, Bonang mm. Wanaka, they didn't have to tell me what to do. No All they had to do was to show me my marks. And the rest was up to me. And you could hear a pin drop. It was, people used to cry. Because I don't wish depression on anybody, Anyone. not even my enemy. Because it's a bottomless, dark pit, hopelessness. Then how do you remove yourself from the hopelessness? You know, and people expect you, Mum Lillian, to make us laugh. Yeah, we people expect will tell you, you to arrive. Hi, Manuena, pull yourself uh, towards yourself. Let's go out. Don't be like this. But what they don't know is that you're already dead. Oh, my. Because it depression is something else, sweetheart. I mean, when I had cancer, I never got depression. I just knew I was going to die, and I begged God to save me, and I was mm. saved. But with depression, there's no hope. Is that the reason why you then, you know, decided to get involved with the organization, uh, SADC? So that you know how I got to be working group? with SADC and Zane? I won an award for playing the matron with depression. So because I talk too much, if you give me time now, I'll take over this show. And <laughs> Let's not do that, Mama, please. I still want my job. <laughs> So on the day at the awards, yes. I was so happy that I got an award I, 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 acting about depression sure. because I knew that I would never, ever deal with it again because mm -hmm. here I was, I acted it out, I showed everybody, and I won an award. So I spoke forever, and Zane had. As a result, we went to Felicia Mabuza's show. Mm. And me and Zayn, till today, have been working together. I've done the speaking books for them. Yes. That's my uh, uh, charity of choice. Mm. I do it for nothing because I want to. Mm. Because I don't want anybody ever suffering from depression. I mean, it's so fascinating to hear you say that and then to hear your story and discover everything you've been through. And you still have the power, the talent, the will, the determination to produce a hilarious series like Squeeze Us. Hey! <laughs> Don't Where start. did the idea of Squeeze Us come from? <laughs> We all have dreams. Oh, yes. When I used to look at the Golden Girls, I yes. said, when I turn 60, I want to do a comedy. Gold, yeah. Guess what? On the very day, the SABC told me I've got a squeezers. Mm. That's the day they were told me I had cancer, and I didn't know what to do first, to die first, and oh, then do squeezers. So squeezers and then die. And then die. <laughs> I love it. I yes, really, really yes, love it. Yes. But, Mum Lillian, we're going to talk about squeezers a little bit more, a little bit later, because we've run out of time right now. But please call us, tweet us, and tell us what you love about Mum Lillian Dube. Any organization in your community that you are helping, it is, of course, we're celebrating Nelson Mandela Man. So, hopefully, you're doing your bit, all right? Call us right now and tweet us. All our guests are still in studio. But you do know about the Revlon competition. The question is would you love to experience a day in my life? Then make sure you catch our Revlon Foundation Friday series right here on Afternoon Express. And enter our competition on Twitter. Very simple. Tweet us a picture of you holding your Revlon Color Stay Foundation. Tag us at Afternoon Chat and use our hashtags. Hashtag Foundation Fridays. Hashtag Love is On. And you and a plus one could win the ultimate celebrity experience where you'll be treated to 24 hours of luxury. Do remember that the competition runs all the way until the 21st of August. All T's and C's and details on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. So don't miss out on this once in a lifetime opportunity. So don't get snapping, right? Everybody has been asking us on Twitter. Is it only for girls? No, it's for anybody as long as you're over the age of 18. Don't go anywhere after the break. Danilo makes us a cake and we speak with former Miss Deaf South Africa, Simone Buerta. Stay tuned.
South Africa. Are you with us? Welcome back, South Africa. What a beautiful show we're having today. And I thought we'd add a nice sweet twist. So we're making two desserts in the kitchen today. And joining us is our next guest, uh, Ishe Governor Ipma. Very good to have you with us. Hello, thank you for having me. It's so awesome to see all these ingredients in front of us because I see you've also got some lemon here today. And yes, I'm very I excited. Do. And it's really uplifting evergreen fruit. Uh, we're going to use it in our cake today. Amazing. Um, shall we get started? Yes. So I hear that we're making like an upside down caramel cake. And what I love about the way that you cook it is that you're not actually a chef or a baker as a profession. You're sort of a foodie and a traveler so this is yes, my a, type of chef yeah well I'm a travel writer who writes about culture and food as well and I get to try a lot of it on the road Amazing. what we're going to do is we're going to create a toffee okay. by adding our butter mm -hmm. and our sugar right all in okay. one so I see you using the uh, salati's cast of snow and I know this is really nice and light because it's a fine texture it mixes very nicely into all of the dishes that you're making whether it be a dessert or a meal itself which I love 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 what I want to say about this is that we're not going to do any stirring. You don't want to introduce anything else into the pan. If you need it to melt, what you do is you swirl. And oh. while we're on this topic of the pan, because we start the cake in the pan and yes. we finish it in the pan. So oh, we're creating amazing. a toffee here. We're going to build this up, basically. All right. So then I'm assuming we're going to need a pan that can withstand all kinds exactly. of temperatures Just, and heats and things. Yeah, make sure it's heavy bottom, Teflon coated so the cake can slip out. Okay. And it's got a metal um, So handle. no plastics. Right. All right. Okay. So we've actually got a completed toffee there, I see. Yes. So we've got our toffee here. Mm -hmm. We just need it to, to heat up. Heat up a bit. And what we're going to do is add a little bit of lemon juice. Right. You're welcome to ask me to help you <laughs> out if you need some. The vanilla, vanilla extract. Okay. Is this the vanilla here? Yes. Here? There we go. Let's slide that in. Amazing. And there's obviously the lemon that's in there. Yeah. Gives that toffee a really, really nice flavor. Yeah, it sort of helps to mellow it out as well. All right, so you would let this go for a little while until it darkens. Okay. And what we're going to do now is add our lemons in. And this is where okay. you come in as well. Yay! They're flayed out in concentric circles. Okay, now she's used this word concentric. And I had to ask you before <laughs> what concentric means. Go. What does concentric basically mean? Going round and round in circles. Yeah, until we've, we're done. And we can do a little overlap. That's oh. okay. Reach over you here and take a few. Right. Oh. Teamwork. Teamwork, I love it. I love helping Ooh, the I kitchen. Can smell that toffee now. Yeah, you can. Mm. It's good. Okay. Pass me that. Okay. Right. Ah, fine. Go. I'll put the last and one. And one more. One more. There we okay. go. So we're taking that off the heat. Okay. So now we've right. basically prepared our base. Yes, you prepared your base. There's one other ingredient to go with that, and that's a, a handful of some savory thyme. Oh. Because this adds a nice counterpart. You see that it is Never getting, seen that done before. It is getting quite dark, as you can see. Mm. So you want to keep that off the heat. Yes. Right, let's get going with the cake batter. Okay, amazing. Right. <coughs> so sugar and butter. Again, the same sugar that we used in the sauce. Okay, cool. So nice custard. Yes, and we're going to give it... Here we go. On. Yeah, give it the mm. maximum power. There we mm. go. Okay. Messy cooking. <laughs> Where all the fun is had. Yeah. Okay, so you would let this go for about 10 minutes until it's really nice and pale okay. and fluffy. Um, but right. in the meantime, I suppose we're just showing everyone how we can get it done. We'll so show we're going to do the espresso like. express version. Yeah. And I'm going to add an egg yolk. We've got four, one at a time. Okay. And you just keep that going. Right. What is the purpose of adding one at a time as opposed to just throwing them all in? No, I guess it just doesn't split that way. Oh. All right. So, will you stop that for a second? Right. Now we're going to add our dried ingredients. Let's I should just, get some of that all Yeah, let's do that. We've got a spoon here. No, no, it's easier way. <laughs> just, just speed <laughs> it back up. <laughs> that it Let it splat all over the counter. Why not? <laughs> okay. So I've got flour that's been sifted in baking powder, cool. as well as zest, lemon zest. Cool. Now I can carry on. No, you don't not do yet. anything. Oh, no. I don't even do anything. No, okay, no you cool. don't. Okay, now we're going to mix it in. It's quite a thick batter at this okay. stage, as you can see, but we've got a little trick for lightening it up. Okay, right. so this is called folding, which is something that I've always been impatient with. I always thought you can just whisk everything together, and apparently that's not you, a very... You're going to see a little more exact folding in a second. Okay, All right, cool. so you just mix I'll that just up for me. I'll keep doing it for you. You can carry on with the next steps. Yes, the next step is the egg yolk. Let's take this in egg white in three parts. Okay, so I see right. you've, you've whipped this egg white. Yes, I whipped it up. Three parts, and you mm. fold. So shall I show you what folding is? Okay. Yeah, there we go, there we go. <laughs> That's a polite way of saying, please let me do this, otherwise you're going to mess up my entire recipe. Yeah. It's just a very light movement. Okay, cool. All right, so we'd keep going, and we would do that with 
the rest of the egg white, okay. but what and we it... have instead is the batter oh, ready here. So I did worried. <laughs> I'm glad. Okay, so let's show you what the final one looks like. Yes. Now we've got to lay it out over the the lemons. Okay, so we're moving back here this yes. side. And how you want, actually show me how to do this because this yeah. is the part that you said is quite intricate because yeah. I just wanted to because, push it down. Yeah, and... you've got to have to you're gonna be a little patient now. So you're gonna okay. take a little bit of this batter and mm -hmm. you're gonna put it all over the pan and basically okay, so cover spread it that. Out nicely. Yeah. So that's gonna take a little while. Okay. Right. We covered it all nicely. Mm-hmm. And that's the one that you're gonna be pressing down almost it makes yeah. like the actual so it covers cake. everything. Okay. What I want to tell you about this cake, mm. once we've got it in the oven, it's going to brown very quickly after 15 minutes. It okay. takes about 40 minutes to cook, and the way we test it is obviously with a skewer inserted in the center, mm. comes out so clean. Keep it dry, then you know that yeah. it's done. Now, the, what I do to assist with the fact that it gets so brown so quickly is I add some heavy duty foil on. Okay. So when we've smoothed this out nicely, all right, we're going to put it into pan. So imagine that it's been smoothed okay, so out. Okay, so we're kind of smoothed out, you can put some tin foil. <laughs> yeah. And then you remove the tin foil as well after 15 minutes. Uh -huh. okay. And what temperature do you put in the oven at? At 180 degrees, the standard okay. temperature okay. For, for cakes. And what you're going to end up with, because you're going to turn this cake over. Oh my gosh, you just flop it back and I see yeah. the lemons on top. And now, there. do you see why we need a Teflon coated pan as well? Okay. And heavy base, so we have yes. even cooking. So we've got that toffee layer at the bottom. We've got mm -hmm. the, the lemons, which have become a sort of like marmalade, yes. really. Okay. And. And yes. apparently there's something really nice about this cake is that if you do feel like the marmalade is maybe the skin's a little bit too bitter for you, just sprinkle a little bit more yes. icing, uh, cast sugar on yes, top. Yes, you can do that. Okay, amazing. And you're also serving it with a... We're going to serve it with some Greek yogurt, but okay. you can also use a dollop of creme fraiche okay. to break it up a little. Amazing. So while you're getting ready with that and getting it cut and ready yes. for the table, I hear Bonnie's up to some business on the couch. Today, First for Women Insurance is continuing the first SA Women series through Afternoon Express, where we celebrate, admire, and learn from a number of fantastic South African women. Today, we're going to chat to Simone Bertha, former Miss Def SA South Africa, <laughs> professional ballet dancer, motivational speaker, and ambassador for the organizations Ribbon for Roses and Carol Dutoy. She also recently danced the lead role in the South African National Dance Trust's Spartacus of Africa. Welcome to The Loft. Thank Good you. to have you, Simone. Thank you. Now, you are the youngest person to have received a cochlear implant. How has that helped you lead a normal life? Well, yes, I was the youngest child at that stage in Africa to receive mm -hmm. a cochlear implant. I got my cochlear implant at 20 months. And since then, I've been taught how to speak and um, hopefully how to cope well um, in normal here in society. And uh, it's definitely helped me to be the person that I am today. I don't think uh, I would have been the person that I am today without my cochlear implant, without my, my parents and the, the support that I've received as a child. And also I went to Carl Tutoy, which is a school where deaf children learn to speak. Right. And then after that, I went on to normal mainstream schools and I just had lovely support groups, you know, to push me and so that I can persist um, to cope in normal UN society yes. and to live life as a normal, you know, person and not to say, well, I have to sit back and I can't do the things that normal people do just because I'm hearing impaired. Yes. And I mean, for people watching who don't know what a cochlear is and what its function is, what is it? And what was your life like before the transplant? Well, I was born completely deaf, so I can't really tell you what life was like uh, before that yeah, because yeah. I got it 20 months. Um, but basically, it's a surgically implanted device into the cochlea mm -hmm. and um, electrodes. So, you know, I should, I should be very careful what I say because I'm not the expert um, on, on all of this, but very basically, I've got the outside processor that connects with the, the implant on the inside, okay. and uh, the, the sounds are being transported uh, to it and to the brain. So mm -hmm. basically, my brain is the one that's being fantastic and making all the sound. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. And you've gone on to overcome this challenge and do great things. You've just completed a run in the Spartacus for Africa as the lead dancer. That's a huge workload. Yeah, definitely. I was extremely, um, I won't say surprised, but I'm very humble, you know, when I got my phone call to say, listen, yeah, we want you to be the lead in Spartacus of Africa. And I was like, whoa, you know, I, I didn't expect it to actually come How so soon. How did it soon. come about? Did you audition? Um, yes, we, we uh -huh. auditioned, so mm -hmm. there were um, dancers from right over South Africa 
that uh, you know auditioned for for this ballet, and I just hoped to get in. But then you know I got this lead role, and especially for me, the big thing was that there was actually a lead role in a Veronica paper ballet. Um, uh -huh. My first production I did with Veronica was when I was five years old, and never in my life did I think I was going to actually dance a lead role in one of her ballets. So for me, it was a very humbling experience yeah. and a wonderful opportunity that I'm very grateful for. Wow, you do a lot of charity work within the deaf, deaf um, associations. What would you like South Africans to know about people facing this kind of a challenge? Don't, we, especially with people with disability, you look at them and you go, oh, shame. You know, we yeah. don't like that. You don't like uh, being pitied. Yeah. No, yeah. we don't. We, we, it's a challenge that we've got and we've got to live with it and how we can make it beautiful and you know, show the world that we can also do just what everyone else is doing. Yes. It's just a different road that we have to take, it's a different ladder that we have to climb mm. and to how to make it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like any other challenge as well. And I mean, it's not easy. It's not it's easy, not exactly. easy. It's yeah. The road is difficult. You'll get many challenges. You, you'll get people that tell you, you can't make it, you know, that people um, sometimes told me, I'll never make it as a professional dancer because I can't hear the music. Okay. And I was very determined to prove them wrong, that it's not, it's, it's a challenge, but I can prove that I can make it. Yeah. Do you feel like you have to work 10 times harder than everybody else? Definitely, yeah, especially when it comes to, um, you know, the music, you know, I can't hear the music, yeah. so I've got to rely on other senses to, to you know, make me be, be able to cope. You know, so um, my eyes are working very hard. I'm ah. always aware of the other dancers in the room. You know, when I do solos, you know, yes. side stage, I've got uh, people standing in the wings, you know, to yeah. give me a cue. Uh, when I dance with my dance partner, then I'm very aware of what yeah. he's doing yeah. and his musicality, and I'll go with his flow. Right. So, so as a result, do you feel like your other senses have been heightened yeah, as well and enhanced yeah, in the definitely. process? Wow. So sometimes, you know, like when I learn choreography, then for the first week, oh, I have such a headache because I've got to like look yeah, everywhere you're focusing and so hard, you know, yeah. I have to focus, you know, and also I have to rely on my body rhythm. Mm. So it's also, you know, like you rehearse over and over and over, and then you get your body rhythm. But then that's also not always reliable because for this show we had the orchestra playing, yeah. and they're not always the same every night. So that can be quite scary, you know, and also with Veronica Paper, she's very, very, very musical yes. in her choreography. So for me in the beginning, I was quite a bit nervous about that, thinking, oh my word, she's so musical, <laughs> I'm gay, like, how, how yeah. am I gonna be yeah. able to do that? But I just kept calm and I had the people, you know, supporting me. Yeah. And I just said, you know what, I can do this. That's you know? incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much, Simone, for sharing your inspiring journey with us. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Simone, we salute you and so does First for Women. For Women celebrates, okay, sorry, First for Women celebrates and empowers South African women through its insurance products and services. First for Women recognizes that women are unique and so offers insurance tailored specifically for women as well as a host of lifestyle, medical, travel and business benefits to support you on your journey. For a quote on a car, home, business or life insurance, call First for Women on 0861 111844 or SMS FIRST to 49267 and they'll call you right back. After the break, we'll launch Launching our Go Green Sustainability Series. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Blended with treacle syrup, Salati Demerara makes delicious honeycomb, cookies, crumbles, brine marinades, and sweet potatoes. Salati, always good, always sweet. Welcome back. You're still watching Afternoon Express right here on SABC3. We're all extremely excited because today is the launch of our sustainability series, which runs over the next 12 weeks. We have some amazing prizes up for grabs. You definitely don't want to miss out on this. And in case you're out of the loop, well, take a look at this.
The Afternoon Express team is going green. Join us every Tuesday at 4 p.m. until September as we bring you the most innovative trends in sustainable fashion, food, decor and design, as well as handy tips to help you reduce your carbon footprint. Answer our Go Green question every Tuesday and stand a chance to win a thousand rand Woolies gift card every week. Plus, if you answer all 12 questions correctly, you'll be entered into our draw for the ultimate grand prize valued at more than half a million rand. Including a dream sustainable kitchen makeover from Cordev worth 300,000 rand. Also up to 250,000 rand worth of home upgrades so you can live off the grid. Plus food and homeware from Woolworths valued at 75,000 rand. And a 25,000 rand towards a school of your choice with my school. So go big, go green with Afternoon Express every Tuesday at 4 p.m. to win these amazing prizes. It looks so exciting, man. Now in the loft today, we have the CEO of Delta Natural Gas. He's here to discuss with us energy conserving methods, which might provide the answer to the energy crisis Africa is currently undergoing. Let's welcome Aldworth Mbalati into our loft. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I knew you were coming, see TIA, this is Africa. No, well, didn't thank get it. you for having me and thank you for putting me outside and not putting me in. It, this is gorgeous. I mean, you know why we, are outside because obviously we, we're talking sustainability and you know energy conservation all of that but before we start mm -hmm. should South Africans be stressed about you know the current blackout that's happening in South Africa well I don't think so mm -hmm. as human beings we were once uh, uncivilized we didn't have running water we didn't have anything mm -hmm. and we managed to survive well so I think today we can survive. Even if we were to have a total blackout, I don't think it is anything that we should be worried about. Mm -hmm. It is something that we should take in our stride and manage and handle very well. So I think we can survive it. But you know, out of, out of everybody saying to us, yeah, switch off your geezers, you know, switch or take off the, the, uh, the kettle and the toast and whatever out of the plug on the wall. But everything that we're doing, is it making a difference? As an individual, Bonang, you know, in my home, doing my thing, am I really, really making a difference? What is being South African all about? It's all about unity, mm -hmm. it's all about Ubuntu, and that translates to you doing your bit. If we all did our bit, yes, it all makes a difference, but if you as Bonang alone do it, well, it doesn't matter, you might as well not do it. So if we join hands together and do something about it, we are definitely going to contribute into our energy crisis and it is going to help all of us have a better South Africa. Let's talk about that and some ideas and options that we can do at home. I mean, you're the CEO of a natural gas company. So obviously you have a couple of ideas that I can do at home, something, tricks, you know, a couple of pointers that can make a difference in my particular home and how much energy I use. Well, it starts with you being conscious of how you're using your energy. Mm. I mean, you get out of a room at night, switch off your light. You're saving True. energy and you're, you're putting money back into your pocket. If you're renovating your house, make sure that you insulate your geyser so that the, the, the heat doesn't run wild. Yeah. Make sure that you switch off the geyser if you're not using it. Yeah. When your light bulbs goes off, make sure you buy an LED light. It, la it lasts longer. It uses less electricity. Okay. So there are many things that we can do, even if we are not energy fundies. Just be practical about it. Use less power. The less you use and the more of us are using less mm. power, the more effective we are going to be in terms of preserving energy. Then what do you say to somebody that says, you know, uh, green living, going green, sustainability, energy saving is expensive. It's not practical. What would you say to them? It is practical. Mm. You don't have to go big. You have to take small steps at a time in order to get there. So do what you can today. Being green does not mean that you have to be all this out person who all of a sudden you are living in an unrealistic world. We live in a practical world. Do practical things that help conserve society. Do what you can. That is what sustainable living is all about. If you're contributing to the betterment of society but by what you're capable of doing, then you are being green. So we can all improve all the time. Yeah. So that is the message that I, I would like to give to everyone. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming through. If you want any more details about Aerith, of course, what his company 
is all about. Go, to, go into our website, afternoonexperience.co.za. Remember to enter our Go Green competition. Stand a chance of winning a 1,000 Rand Woolies gift voucher this week. And also go into our door for the amazing grand prize by answering the following question. What was today's sustainable topic? Was it A, green energy, B, recycling, or C, gardening? SMS the keyword, go green, your name, city, and answer A, B, C, or and SMS it to 3378. For now, let's join Danilo on the couch. Yes, I'm glad that you mentioned sustainability because I'm very excited about our next conversation. We've welcomed Shadow Twala back onto our couch as well as an incredible woman, uh, Erica Ulk, who's received awards for the amazing work that she's doing. Both of these ladies are involved in an organization called the CCDI. Now, basically, this organization is involved with trying to get businesses up to a point where they are uh, finding funding and getting their creative energies up and going uh, in, in their sort of creative fields. Now, first of all, ladies, Erica, thank you for joining us on the couch today. I'll tell you why I'm so fascinated by this conversation. It's because uh, in NGOs in South Africa are not treated with the same amount of respect as for-profit businesses are, and it's incredibly hard to find funding and start an NGO with all the bureaucracies that are around at the moment. So, Erica, first of all, let's start with you. Uh, being the executive director, tell us more about the NGO itself. Um, all right, so we were started 15 years ago. So as an NGO, I think we've got quite a sort of long, long track record. Mm. Um, I was the founding director, so I've been there um, the, whole, the whole period. Okay. Um, and essentially, we, we were started, I think, sort of interestingly, a partnership between um, public and, and private sector, mm -hmm. um, a lot of government um, support. Um, and because in you know, 15 years ago, which is kind of hard to think about now when we think mm. about how strong the sector is, mm. um, particularly um, in, in, in this, it, mm. yeah, um, was... That the, that the creative sector has the potential for small business development and job creation. Why is it important for creatives to be in any business? Well, I suppose anybody needs to make a living. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, some people want to go and, and, you know, I suppose everybody's different. Yeah. Um, and so creatives, what, what we create is a platform for people to use their, their creativity to live with their passion yeah. and, and, and make money. Well, and make money and sure. survive. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. And also to deal with the issue of unemployment, which mm. is key in our country. We, we could empower more people to do what they love and what they are good at, because mm. South Africans are very creative. Mm. And we think out the box most of the time. If you look at all the products... We're hardworking too. Exactly. Mm. Contrary to somebody else. <laughs> But, you know, it, it, it is to address that issue, which is a very big issue. And I think that's why government supports organisations mm. to do that, to, mm. to find ways of, of helping, of helping startups to create their own businesses. And, yeah. you know, the most important thing in, in running a business, whatever it is, is that you're doing what you love doing and that yeah. you have the passion for it. And it's also discouraged in our country, I suppose, in a lot of ways. The creative fields are discouraged because it's yeah. not the easiest route to make money. People think, and you guys are trying to change the face of that. So, Shadow, obviously, as chairperson, your role is to make sure you're inspiring. You are making sure that the board is structured correctly, making sure the organization has a vision, it has a mission. What is your vision and mission for the CCDI? Well, I mentioned earlier, firstly, you need to find people who can do what you want them to yes. do and who don't need too much leadership because mm. they're also put in, you know, w without being asked. They, everyone's passionate about mm. what they mm. do at CCDI. So it's about us getting together and making sure that we're on the same track. But my personal vision, uh, which I, I, I try and, and, and sway the board to think about, is really using CCDI as a launch pad for many other, because mm. it's worked for 15 years. Yes. And if we can just duplicate it, to different uh, city councils or communities mm. around the country, we could see a real swell and mm. hopefully to prove a point awesome. that arts and culture can add value. add value to the GDP of the mm. country. Absolutely. So uh, just finally, I want to get an answer from this, Erica. In terms of the struggles you're facing as an NGO, what are some of the things that you guys are facing that we can try and solve in South Africa? Because starting an NGO is a bureaucratic nightmare. So I think the first thing is, in a way, we, we were started to address a need. Mm. Um, and I think like any business, I think NGOs need to think about themselves as, as talking to a need. And then you've got to keep reinventing yourselves. We, yep. we, we continually were engaged all the, every single day with, with creatives. So we're understanding what are, what are their challenges, what are the opportunities, and helping mm. them leverage it. 
Amazing. So if you're a creative and you're based in Cape Town, make sure you get involved with this organization. Absolutely incredible work that they are doing, contributing to the GDP and helping for-profit businesses get to a point where they're utilizing creatives in the right way. Now, after the break, Lillian joins us back on the couch to discuss her involvement with SADAG. You don't want to go anywhere. And make sure you give us a call, 083-913-3728. This is your chance to ask the questions you want to know. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. You're still watching SABC3. Now, the South African Depression and Anxiety Group is an NGO that focuses on mental illness and the stigma surrounding it. Now, you know, earlier on, we did speak to Mum Lillian Dewey, who has been an ambassador for the... Uh, for the group for a number of years. And now we're joined by Mr. Ryan Edmonds, the media spokesperson for SADC. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Thank you very much. Now, first and foremost, what does your organization do for somebody that has never heard of us? We do a lot. Uh, I think one of the most important things that we do is we help to remove stigma associated with mental health and mental illness in South Africa and around the world. Uh, one of the most important roles that we do play, however, is we have a call centre where people can phone in and receive guidance and support, whether it's uh, an immediate suicide, people want information wow. on depression, anxiety. Uh, so our counsellors are constantly faced with a, you never know who's on the other line. It could be someone standing on the top of a bridge or it might be a parent who's concerned about a drug problem. Wow. And Mamli Ndubi, you didn't mention that you have done, you have, you know, done a number of things, the, the speaking book and all of that. But before we get into that, what is your role in the organization? What exactly do For you instance, do? For instance, you'll be having Tate Mandela's birthday, ne? Mm. What I do, I go to their offices and I answer calls from people who are very depressed and I talk them through and understand their problems and share with them. Mm. Mm. How long has the organization been around and for somebody that's watching that does have depression or thinks they do have depression, how do they get in, in touch with you? Well, we've been around for 21 years, so we're an adult now, officially. Hey! And uh, people can contact us quite easily. We have a lot of toll-free lines. We have the SADAG website. Uh, people can just Google the South African Depression and Anxiety Group or sadag.org. Mm -hmm. uh, we have various toll-free lines, but people will always come into the same call center. We also have a 24-hour substance abuse line. So no matter what time, day or night, SADAG runs 365 days throughout the year. We're always on call. Uh, so we're really easy to get in touch with. And I think one of the best things is that you have a voice on the other end of the phone who knows what they're talking about. They're empathetic. Um, and it's someone who's approaching your situation without judgment. I love that. Mm -hmm. But what are some of the, the, pop, the most popular cases that you see are recurring in you know, South African youth or the, in South Africa in general? The type of calls that you always seem to get. Sure. Uh, depression and anxiety are massive in South Africa at the moment. Wow. I started it at SADAG about eight years ago myself, and I was shocked at the number of calls we get in a day, between eight or 900 calls a day into our call center. Many of them are suicide calls, uh, and a lot of them are teenagers and young people as well needing help. Mam Lillian Dube, being part of the organization and somebody who has spoken out about having depression, mm -hmm. how has your involvement with SADC changed your life or impacted you as a human being? To start with, it has taken away the stigma. Because, you know, when you are depressed, people start talking behind your back. You know what Gundringa is. Mm. She's mad. What's when educated it? people are mad, they say they have got a nervous breakdown. Mm. If you are not educated, they say you are mad. That's true. You but, see? And, and how has it impacted you? Has it, you know, made it easier for you to deal with? Has it changed your um, approach, you know, to, to depression and the organization itself? It has, especially with people who have bipolar. I think all of us, at one level or another, we are bipolar. But yeah. now, understanding those people, I treat them with empathy and sympathy mm. because it's, you, you haven't caused it. You need help. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Ryan, for you know somebody that's watching right now, they want to be involved, they want to volunteer, and you are an NGO, what type of help do you need right now at SEDEC? One of the biggest, I would say, if not the biggest, is financial help. Okay. Uh, being obviously a non-profit organization, uh, we get no input from the Department of Health, even oh. though we are a mental health NGO. Mm. We do get some assistance from uh, Departments of Social Development that help us run one of our lines and uh, some of our projects. But everything that we do is 
we go and look for the sponsors ourselves, gotcha. whether it's pharmaceutical or it's mm. private uh, donations. So funding is big at the moment. Okay. And I think one of the biggest things is that people are focusing on substance abuse or they're focusing on the resulting issues, but why are people abusing drugs and True. alcohol? All right. If we can get to that, we can get to the root Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. Well, for more information, you're doing such a fantastic job. Mam Lillian, thank you so much for coming through. Go to afternoonexpress.co.za. Danilo and Bonnie are sitting at the table to wrap things up. Indeed. Guys, this is such a big thing, I think, in NGOs nationally, is this funding issue. It's mm -hmm. always going to be an issue. We must continue to try and drive it. Wherever you can, contribute in some small way. It is absolutely vital. I know this conversation is probably going raging at home at the moment. Yeah. So if you want to continue the conversation on our social media sites, make sure mm -hmm. you do that. And don't forget to enter our Go Green competition as well to stand a chance of winning 1,000 Rand Woolies gift voucher this week and also go on into the draw for that amazing grand prize yep. for answering the following question. The question is, what was today's sustainable topic? Was it A, green energy, B, recycling, or C, gardening? All you need to do is SMS the keywords, go green, your name, city, and answer A, B, or C to double three seven two eight. It's that simple. Thank you so much, Danilo. A big thank you to all our lovely guests and to you at home for watching. From myself, Danilo, and Bonnie, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 4 p.m. Cheers. Bye. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, Miss South Africa 2009 Nicole Flint joins us in the loft. Together we discuss how to achieve the goals we set for ourselves and we take a look at the pet photography industry. Another feel good production. Join us next time for more fabulous fun inspired by First for Women on Afternoon Express. For an insurance quote call 0861 11 or SMS FIRST to 49267.